With Rick. I'm Rick Wilson, the owner of the Wilson Practical Defense website and senior curriculum advisor to KPC Self Defense in Edmonton. We're talking about the plea of self defense, and as always, and as promised, I'm holding up Mark McYoung's book on In the Name of Self Defense because I think it's a great reference. What we're talking about today is something that Mark McYoung covers in here, and it, uh, there's a, a, like a chapter on it, so I'm touching the basis of it. And I think it's an excellent point. What he's talking about is that when you're articulating the why you did what you did, you want to break it down into time segments so that you show a progression, you show this, you show this. Don't talk about the overall situation. Oh, he attacked me. That's why I defended myself. Well, he was drunk and he was stumbling and he wasn't capable and you killed him. No, oh, that doesn't sound very good. Sounds like I'm going to jail, okay? But if you start to break it down, you know, um, this guy got really annoyed at me in a bar, started making comments. You know, I asked him what the problem was, can I buy him a drink, and the guy swore at me. So I decided I was going to leave. I got up to leave, the guy gets in front of me, says, you're not going anywhere. Try to go someplace else, no, you're not going anywhere. I'm going to take out my cell phone to call the cops. He jumps on me and slams me to the ground. So I'm def trying to keep him off. He's hitting me. He's pounding on me. And I'm trying to keep him off. Now all of a sudden he's got me by the throat. And he's choking me and I'm blacking out and I'm blacking out. And I happen to have a knife so you pull it and I stab him once. And now they're pulling him off of me. And I don't stab him again because now they pull him off of me and there's no threat. And he dies. You just, with a weapon, killed an unarmed man who was stinking drunk. Now, that overall situation, this is stealing right from Mark McKeown's book here, uh, is, is, doesn't sound very good. But the articulation of it is the fact that you didn't pull your knife when he was insulting you. You didn't pull your knife when he was uh, coming, you know, stopping you. You didn't pull his knife when he was on, knocked you down. You didn't pull your knife when he was just beating on you. Only when he was actually killing you did you use lethal force. Okay. So, and when he stopped the attempt at killing you, you stopped using le lethal force. Now, I'm not going to say that everybody's going to buy that this was self-defense or this was right, but it certainly sounds much better than, hey, a drunk was trying to slap me around and I killed him too. Some guy was strangling me and I was blacking out and I was dying. And I, my firm belief was he was not going to stop until I was dead. And I had to kill him to stop him. That's certainly a more reasonable statement. And again, here's where we come back to why I'm not going to tell you that that would be seen as self-defense. I'm not. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not on your jury pool. I'm not on the judge pool. I'm not the judges looking at it. Um, but I know that by breaking things down, you do two things. You do a number of things. First of all, you walk them through jam. You walk them through when jam changes. For example, I talked about earlier about that Krav Maga tape where they broke a hole, they punched the guy, broke this, broke that, knocked him on the ground, and then stomped him. What you want to show is, you know, I want, let's take two different scenarios. I do what I need to do and I put this guy on the ground and once he's down, he, he, I can see he's out and I step back and I distance myself and I get myself the heck out of there, out of, out of danger, okay? I stopped inflicting force and damage when the threat was stopped, when I was safe. That's going to go, uh, again, a long way to being reasonable. I didn't continue it past the point of the threat. Let's take the point where you stomped him. If the guy's on the ground, he's unconscious, but I said, I just didn't really want him to get back up, or, you know, he attacked me, I thought he deserved it, and I stomp him again, no more self-defense. If the guy starts to pull a knife out and, and grabs your leg and, he, you know, is attacking you now with lethal force and you stomp him, again, at least I can articulate why I did it. 
whether it's going to be seen as reasonable use of force is going to be up to those hearing it. But at least I can articulate it with some sense of reasonableness that I had to do that. So if you break it down, you can show all the times that you, uh, what you did to attempt it. I, I tried to buy the guy a drink. I tried to leave. I tried to call the cops. I did all of these things to try and avoid this going to a use of force rather than a, just a big old picture where I say oh, I defended myself. So I like how uh, Mark McGinn approaches it where he says don't think of it as one big incident. Think of it as a series of small incidences that you can really walk them through because particularly if you have a person that doesn't believe force is, uh, violence is an answer to anything. Um, that person is just not going to see why you use force. You were dealing with this drunk guy, you should I, I deal with my drunk uncle Fred all the time. I never once had to hurt him. Why would you have to hurt this person? Um, and you know what? That's a reasonable question. So, but if you can walk them through the steps that you did to try and do everything you possibly could not to use force, you can bring them to that point of, wow, you did everything you could. You really didn't have a choice because that guy now, he's jumping all over you. Hopefully that's where you've led him. I'm not going to say you did, but breaking it down by point by point, you can bring out far more information about what you did properly to stay on the side of self-defense, and hopefully you're moving closer and closer to the middle of that platform and not too many people can reach you. So break it down into small, small time segments and incidents. Don't talk about the whole package, because it may not look the way you want it to look. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.